Hello, everyone. I am Brother Self-Righteousness, and I am also known as Brother Sinless Perfectionist within my YouTube ministry. I create a construct as a religious self-righteousness and a sinless perfectionist so that I portray an image of a good man. I pretend to represent and have the mind of Jesus. As brother self-righteousness and as brother sinless perfectionist, I will point my finger at you and I will expose your sins, transgressions, and inequities. God forbid you criticize me or give me feedback or try to give me constructive criticism because you don't like what I have to say in my ministry. The image management and the construct, I paint myself so that you think I'm perfect. I will direct your focus to the sins of others that have hurt me because I do not want to think about my own sins. As long as I am a victim, because after all, I am brother self-righteousness and I am brother sinless perfectionist. So I only can be a victim and you guys keep picking on me and hurting me and you're abusing me. So it's easier for me to analyze, investigate and research the sins of others and dissect the problems and imperfections of others in my culture rather than look at myself. I exalt myself above the throne of God as my father Satan does. <clears throat> Second Corinthians 10, 3, 5. So it talks about spiritual war in 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, <clears throat> bringing every thought captive into bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So. I am in agreement with the altar of the goods of the kingdom of darkness through the spirit of Leviathan, Python, Mammon, Moloch, Jezebel, the octopus spirit, and the unclean spirits. These are the fallen angelic principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age, and the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places that work within my territory of my assignment for the kingdom of darkness. Because my image in the kingdom of darkness, I am brother self-righteousness, and I am brother sinless perfectionist. So that's me holding up knowledge and exalting it against over the knowledge of God. I am prideful and haughty because I think that I am better than everyone. I use religion and the doctrines of demons and the doctrines of men and my own doctrines to manipulate, isolate, dominate, and control and abuse others in my sphere of influence because I am an influencer. I punish those people who dare to expose my image. I expose those people who dare to expose my selfish ambitions, my self-mental intellect, my fleshly carnal desires, and my self-centeredness to serve myself but pretend to serve the will of others. I am a sinless perfectionist and I expect you to be perfect like I am or I will condemn you, persecute you, judge you, steal your destiny, kill your seed of your destiny and destroy your destiny in God's kingdom that you represent. Like in Matthew, didn't Jesus say that when you witness against someone, when two or three witness and they agree that someone is bad, then they are considered heathens and publicans. So if I can get two or three other people to agree with me that I'm a victim and these people are hurting me, then I can judge them as heathens and publicans. I do not do accountability and I will enforce accountability onto you. I will project my sins, transgressions, and inequities on you 
And I will tell everyone, that's what you did to me. And I will triangulate people on my channel. And those people will, will agree with me. And then I can accuse you, again, of being a bad person, a heathen, and a publican. Because it says so in Matthew 12, 18. Or maybe it's Matthew 18, 18, 18. I'm a victim because I am a sinless perfectionist. I represent a decoy because as you, long as you are focusing on me and my doctrines of men and my judgment of men for their transgressions and equities and sins, you will focus on arguing with me to correct my errors in thought. I am always right and you are always wrong. I will project onto you everyone else within my sphere of influence, all of my sins and equities. 1 John 1 10. If we say that we have not sinned, claiming that we are a sinless perfectionist, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Well, guess what? When I point my finger at you, Essentially, I've got three fingers pointing back at me, and now I am saying that I have not sinned and that I'm a sinless perfectionist. Galatians 5.26. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. So page, uh, Pigs in the Parlor book by Frank Hammond, page 34, talks about how demons enter, chapter 5. How demons enter. A classic example of a door being opened by the sin of omission is the failure to forgive. When you have failure to forgive folks, you, you live in resentment and anger and hatred and judgment and persecution towards others. In the case of the unjust steward, Matthew 18, he was turned over to the tormentors because he was unwilling to forgive his fellow servant after he himself had been forgiven by his master. God warns us that all who have experienced his forgiveness and refuse to forgive others will be turned over to the quote-unquote tormentors. What clear designation of demon spirits can we find then quote-unquote tormentors? Unforgiveness opens to the door to the torment of resentment and hatred and related spirits.